Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. We're going to do a, a little bit different comparison of the P365 to this large field of other hand, uh, handguns that you see here. The P365 comes in bragging that it gives you single stack size, double stack capacity, and it comes in at a fairly steep price. Right now MSRP is $599. And as of the making of this video, they're hard to get a hold of, so you're paying that or possibly more until the supply catches up with the demand or the demand tapers off, whichever, whichever way it ends up going. I kind of don't see the demand tapering off. This seems to be a popular gun for discussion. So what we're going to do is compare it to other guns similar to it that have similar capacity and look at their sizes and also compare other guns similar to it that are either more or less expensive. To, because those are really, when you're looking at a carry gun, you're looking at reliability, and everything on this table is proven to be reliable over time. You're looking at you know, the dimensions. How much does it weigh and how big is it to determine whether or not it's going to be comfortable to carry? And, of course, capacity. And then price. Price will factor in. So since we can kind of exclude reliability from the discussion, we'll focus on price, capacity, and size. And there's a lot of guns here. Uh, both Hammer and I have cleared every one of these. So I'm not going to bore you with picking each one of them up every time I touch one and showing clear. They've been double cleared. And the other thing is I'm not going to get into mentioning nitpicky individual numbers. I'm going to do relative sizes, relative weights, things like that. And all of the prices I give are going to be kind of ish because you know, all these other guns are established. They've been in the market for a while. They're either widely available or in the case of some like the P99C that's on the table becoming less available but their pricing will fluctuate depending on where you get them. So I'll just give you the ballpark number of either what I see them going for or what their MSRP is. So enough of that, let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with the uh, P365, which is setting on the scale right now, coming in at a pound, two, and was it a half ounces? 52.6 uh, grams. So that is a fairly light gun for 10 round capacity. And actually, it's 526 grams. From now on, I'm going to let Hammer read the scale. I'm trying to read it from the angle I'm at. I, I can't see the whole display, but Hammer's right in front of it, so he'll read them from now on. So what you've got is your, your typical single stack looking. It's about an inch thick, but it holds 10 rounds. They're fairly small. They're fairly light. This particular gun is a striker gun. And it has a kind of an interesting trigger. It's, it's not a, a P320 trigger, which you figure it would be because it kind of looks like one and it's loosely based on it. The trigger's a little more of, you know, it's got some take up and then some creep and a break. If you want all the details on the trigger, you'll uh, check out our full review on it. But the one gun that you would find in the field that has got a similar trigger is this XDS, which has a similar trigger in that you, know, you get take up and then you get a little bit of creep and a break. And the XDS holds seven rounds, and it's around the $400 mark. This is around $600 mark. But you'll notice that the P365 is much shorter. It's about the same thickness. And if I put them in the ground here, you'll see that the XDS is a little bit taller. If I put them the other way around, you can see them. The XDS is a little bit taller. So the XDS is smaller, holds more. And, or I'm sorry, the P365 is smaller, holds more capacity in the same footprint as the XDS, and has a similar trigger. So if you had an XDS and it was a little bit big for you, but you liked the trigger, P365 might be a good option. There are guns that are significantly smaller. You get something like this car. This is a PM9. They're a little bit on the pricey end of the territory. They'll go up to $800. But there's also a CM9 version of this that's actually less expensive in the three dollars to $400 territory. But when I set them side by side, you'll see that the PM9 is a little bit smaller. It's a little bit shorter. And it's also a hair shorter in the grip. Not significantly shorter in the grip. But the difference is the PM9 only holds six rounds. And, of course, you're getting seven rounds in the uh, P365. And one thing, by the way, before I go any further, all of these guns have the smallest, flushest mag that that particular gun offers. So if, if there's a flush mount one without a pinky extender, you know, no extended mags, trying to keep them at least roughly equal. So now let me go ahead and put the XDS on the scale. And not the 365, we need to put the XDS on the scale. 
I forgot to do that earlier. So you see it's about four ounces heavier. 645 grams. Now back to the PM9 that I had in my hand. One pound, one ounce and a quarter. 491 grams. And it's about an ounce or so lighter than the P365. So it's a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, but holds less capacity. And depending on whether you get the P version or the C version, you're looking at a less expensive gun by you know a couple hundred dollars or a more expensive gun by a couple hundred dollars, depending on which way you go with it. So, you know, you can already see there's quite a diversity of options available. Let's, you know, go to the elephant in the room, the Glock. You know, everybody wants to compare it to a Glock. So the Glock is a little bit longer than the P365 lengthwise. It's about the same height, almost identical height. Glock holds seven. One pound, two and an eighth ounce, 514 grams. So it's a hair heavier. Now one thing I'll note with weight, if you load the P365 to full capacity, it's gonna be noticeably heavier than another gun that had an equal weight because of the weight of the ammo. I'm not gonna count that. And the reason I'm not gonna count that is if you've decided that you want to carry 10 or 10 plus one rounds, you already know that's gonna be heavier. So we're just gonna talk about the gun, what you're gonna start out with. Because obviously you could load this to seven rounds and you know, get a weight similar, six rounds get a weight similar to the clock or any of these other guns. So I'm just gonna focus on the weight of the gun with their empty mags and not consider the amount of what, what the ammo that goes in it weighs. Now this does hold 10 plus one. That's one of its major bragging rights. So what else can I get on this table that would hold 10 plus one? Well, I can get something like this SR9C. I'm gonna put that on the scale. And one pound, seven and three eighths ounce, 663 grams. Notice that's significantly heavier. And it's a much bigger gun. It's longer, it's taller, it's fatter. So to get 10 rounds in the SR9C, you're gonna have you know, a significantly larger gun overall, and, but it is less expensive. The SR9Cs are going in the 400-ish territory. It's a little bit less money, but a lot larger footprint and really kind of drifts away from the bragging rights of what this actually you know, talks about being. Another gun that you can get in that same territory is the Sky. This is a CPX2. The only difference between the one and the two is whether it has a safety. They're similar lengths. The Sky is just a hair longer. The Sky is, I'm going to say taller because this flush, this uh, pinky extender mag is the mag that came with it. So it's taller. Now, if I took, if I was able to get my hands on a flush mount mag for this, then it would be roughly the same height. When I line them up, though, beaver tail to beaver tail, of course, the sky is a little bit longer. And if I put the sky on the scale, oh, scale went and turned itself off. One pound, one and five eighth ounce, 501 grams. Now, surprisingly, the sky is coming in right about the same weight as the P365, but it just feels heavier. When I pick it up, just for some reason, it feels heavier. But, you know, the numbers are what the numbers are. Now this, the Sky, you can get in the 250 and down range. So you can get a you know, much less expensive gun, get similar capacity, and not be a whole lot bigger. Now this is a double action only trigger, but they're, they're a fairly smooth, nice trigger. One thing we'll do is we'll put in links to our reviews on all of the guns that are on the table. If you want to look at any one of these individual guns in more detail, we'll put the links to the reviews and you'll be able to get to them. Now, the other thing that you might find that's currently you know, trending and, and popular is the PPQSC, and this holds 10 rounds as well. Now, the PPQSC is significantly longer. I mean, just even if I line them up perfectly, it's noticeably longer. It's about the same height, maybe just a hair taller, and one pound, five and a half ounce, 612 gram. From a price perspective, this is roughly the same as the P365, about 550, so maybe 50 bucks cheaper. And by the way, I would expect that when the market fills up with these P365s, they'll probably drop down the 550, 
probably will never go behind below 500. They are a SIG after all. But you'll probably be able to get either of these guns about the same price. So you might think, well, then why would I get the PPQ if I can get a smaller, lighter gun that holds the same capacity for about the same money? Because the PPQ has an absolutely awesome trigger. This has this trigger that's almost as good as the full-size PPQ and so close that you really wouldn't be able to tell the difference unless you shot them side by side. So PPQ, a little more weight, a little more bulk, but an awesome trigger. So that's one of the, you know, the trade-offs for that. And of course, the ubiquitous Glock 26. Now this particular one has a Crimson Taste laser guard on it. You know, normally it would come without the laser guard, but that doesn't add anything to the size. But you'll notice the Glock is much longer, much thicker. It's not a whole lot taller. It's about the same height. But it's thicker and it's longer. And, you know, the big advantage to the Glock, let me throw it on the scale and get you the weight. The biggest advantage to the Glock is the magazine compatibility. And, of course, it's a little bit heavier. One pound, six and three-eighth ounce. 634 grams. Now, I probably would take about two ounces off it if I took this laser guard off it. So it's still going to be heavier than the P365. Now, the Glock has the distinct advantage of significant amount of holster availability. And any Glock mag, that'll, any Glock 9mm mag will work in this. Even the mags we're not allowed to talk to about on YouTube will fit in this thing. So you've got a lot of third-party support, aftermarket support, and, you know, mag flexibility for... A little bit more size. I mean, it's it's thicker enough to make a difference when you stick the thing in your waistband. But there's another, and these are in the 550-ish territory, so similar to the PPQ as far as what you're going to pay for one of them. Now there's a couple left in the holding 10 round category. You have this P99C, which is a predecessor to the PPQ. has a tr trigger that's almost as good as the PPQ. Now this one has the AS trigger, the anti-stress trigger which has the unique characteristic that when you pull the take up up on it, once you take the take up out, it kind of locks in that position and stays back. It's kind of a unique trigger, but it is, it's a comfortable trigger and it's, it works well once you get used to it. This one does have the paddle mag release, which was common on the predecessor, the original PPQ. But from a size perspective, just like the PPQ SC, it's, it's noticeably longer and Get it on screen, move this out of the way for a second. And it's just a hair taller. And if I put the uh, P99C on the scale. One pound, five and three quarter ounce. 619 grams. So you're picking up a little bit of weight in addition to the size. Just like the PPQSC, what you're picking up is just an incredible trigger. Now there's a last gun in the you know the holds enough or holds similar capacity is the FNS 9C. This has it beat with the capacity because it holds 12. It's a noticeably longer gun and it's a noticeably thicker gun so yeah that's going to make a bit of a difference and when I put them side by side it's taller so you can see that it is taller noticeably taller and that's your extra round I'll line up the beaver tail so you can see the length. So basically it's a much larger gun than the P365 to get you that extra capacity. But one of the things you find is people that have these things just love them. I, I'm not aware of anybody that's got one of these or had one of these, these FNSs that just didn't love them. And they're kind of a dark horse. You don't hear much about them, but when the subject does come up, you know, you'll get a whole bunch of people, yeah, I got that gun and I just love it. And this is one that uh, Hammer will often carry this one. Now there's a couple single stacks that I neglected to talk about when I was talking about the car and a couple others. And one of them's another SIG. This is SIG's you know, original 9mm carry. It's the P938. And it's you know your standard metal 1911-ish cocked and locked style gun. This one holds six rounds. And it, it's got a really nice short crisp single action trigger. You do have to carry it cocked and locked and that's something that you know not everybody likes. Now this is going to surprise you. I'll go ahead and put this thing on the scale. And, you know, this is an all-metal gun. One pound, one and a half ounce. 496 grams. It's almost the same weight as the, PP, as the P365. 
when I hold them beaver tail to beaver tail, they're about the same length, flip it around, the P365 is actually shorter by a, a decent margin, but it only holds six rounds. It's a, it's a true single stack, and you'll see that a lot of the width of it is grips, whereas the width of this is pretty much the magazine. You know, it's fairly close to the magazine. There is a little bit of a lip on the uh, base plate, but it's, it's minor. So this is using its width up to uh, give you rounds capacity, and this being more of that, you know, that classic 1911-ish style. You know, you got grips on it and, and everything else that are taking up space. But, you know, you got a nice looking, you know, all metal gun if that's the type of thing that you like. Or if you're a 1911 guy, you got a 1911 on your hip and this is a backup gun. But you're going to give up capacity to do that and you're also going to give up pricing. This is a fairly expensive gun. They're around 700 bucks. They go up or down depending on which flavor you get. But these have always been, you know, a little bit on the pricey side. And last but not least in the single stack territory is the shield. And this is an M2.0. Like the other one, it's noticeably longer. It's noticeably taller. And it only holds seven. So you're really not getting, put the right one on the scale there. One pound, four ounce, four and three eighths ounce. 579 grams. So you're you're getting a larger gun and not really getting any more capacity with the shield than you are with the P365. But if you you know if you're a Smith and Wesson guy and you carry like an MP as your full size, then you carry this as your backup, you know, you're gonna have a similar operating trigger and overall operating mechanism. So some of the decision making process might be just capacity. Well, this is gonna win, just price. You know, the C-series version of this or the Sky is going to, you know, kind of come into the place there. Compatibility with my service gun, full-size gun, carry gun, nightstand gun. Well, you're going to be looking at something like the Glocks, the PPQs, things like that that have a lot of magazine interchangeability. And if I'm a 1911 guy, as I mentioned, you're going to get a 1911-ish, you know, small-size carry gun. So when you're looking at the P365, a few of the things to consider is, you know, is obviously the price. It's, it's a SIG gun, so it comes at SIG prices. There has been a little bit of drama with this gun. There's a little bit of issues with the sights that have been rec you know, rectified. And a lot of people are calling the fixed version of that the Gen 2. Not officially being called that by SIG. But they had to swap out the sights to solve a problem with the sights mounting interfering with the barrel. Uh, this particular one, when you, if you've seen our full site or full review on it, it's got a little bit of peening going on in the barrel lugs, so there may be a little bit of a design issue still going on there. So, in summary, it's being reliable than the Gen 2 or the you know the fixed version, but it may not be a, a mature product on the market. You look at some of the others like the Glock and uh, you know the PPQ. Well, PPQ is a little newer on the market, but the Car, the Shield, the Glock. You know, long track record on the market, well established long track record. So if you buy a gun like this one, you might want to make sure you spend some time verifying that it works properly, that it's reliable, you know, get some rounds down range with it. Whereas something like a Glock, you still do it, but you you know you do it to a much lesser extent because of the proven track record. So in summary, though there's not currently anything on the market that's this exact size or smaller that holds the capacity this holds, it's it really does hold the bragging rights for that. There's a lot of things that are close. There's a lot of things less expensive. So if you can't get your hands on a P365 or you're a little concerned about some of the issues and waiting to see if it's settled, or it's just not you, it's just not your style, there's a large selection of things out there. So you know, kind of look around, look at the various reviews. We've got reviews on all of these and there's a number of other high quality channels that have done reviews on these that may you know, have a perspective that kind of suits what you're looking for. It's not necessarily all about capacity or a name. But if you are looking for the highest possible capacity you can get in the smallest possible size, P365 offers that. If not, take a look around at some of the other options. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Patreon. And have a great day. Thank you.